Some love Mozilla, some hate them, but ultimately their existence is a good thing because otherwise you basically have the entire web being controlled not just by Chromium, but specifically by Google Chrome, which has somewhere in the realm of like a 65% market share right now. So yes, there are people who use Safari, and Safari has basically a stranglehold over the Apple users, and I don't expect that to change because Apple users, they do their own thing. But for everyone else... Chromium is basically the default choice. There are other web engines out there, but they have tiny market shares. And while I'm not a Firefox user myself, the existence of healthy competition is crucial to keeping the web doing something remotely sensible. But right now, Firefox is just suffering this very slow and very painful death. And when Firefox falls, even though Mozilla does have all of these other things they're working on, when Firefox falls, Mozilla is going to fall as well. Now, I'm not going to be getting into the political movements Mozilla is funding. I don't think that's relevant to my overall point. And even if they weren't doing that, they would still have a very serious problem on their hands. It is absolutely no secret that the Firefox market share has been dwindling for years. Since 2010, where it had a 25 to 30% market share, depending on which sources you're going with, it's dropped all the way down to roughly 3 to 4%. While it is still like the third biggest browser, the gap to the second place is absolutely massive. I believe that Safari is somewhere in the realm of 15 to 20%. And it's really the only thing alongside Chrome that's actually been growing, basically pulling from Firefox and the other small web browsers. Now, why is it a problem if Firefox goes away? And for that matter, let's say that once Firefox goes away, Chrome actually starts eating away at the Safari user base as well, to the point where Chrome is basically the only big web browser, and then there's other little web browsers that have maybe a couple thousand users, but nowhere near the level of what Google Chrome has. So let's go back in time a bit Let's go back in time to the days of Internet Explorer 6. What a absolutely horrible web browser that application was. But the reason why it was horrible, besides it being just a slow application, is because Microsoft didn't care at all about web standards. They would go and do whatever they wanted, regardless of how much it broke on random websites. And this is the reason why if you go and use some old school websites or old government websites, a lot of them still rely on Internet Explorer because that was the only browser actually built around those messed up Microsoft standards. But back in 2010, the web browser landscape was very, very different. So even though Internet Explorer did have a pretty big market share at 25 to 30 percent, depending on your numbers, Things like Firefox had a pretty big market share as well, and Chrome had a pretty big market share, and even though Safari was the smallest out of them, it still had a pretty decent market share. This means that even though Internet Explorer was trying to define their own web standards, no one really cared. Basically, all that happened is IE6 broke a lot of websites, people got annoyed with IE, and they went somewhere else. So even though Microsoft was trying to take over the web, they just didn't have the market share to convince developers to move to their platform, work with their own custom web standards that just didn't work properly anywhere else, which basically just made the entire project blow up in their face. And even today, even though Edge is nothing like Internet Explorer 6 and is actually based on Chromium, it still left people with some pretty bad memories. Now, what would have happened if, say, I don't know, Internet Explorer had like a 65% a market share, already had a lot of developer support, has a lot of people still talking about how the web browser is really good. Well, that might be what's happening today, where basically Google has the ability to pretty much strong arm the W3C to push through web standards, regardless of whether it's a good idea to do so or not. So things like, say, Google introducing the AMP sites for mobile, and then pushing everyone to use AMP sites, regardless of whether using an AMP site is a good idea, killing third-party cookies, which pretty much just gives Google control over the information being collected and doesn't let other websites collect it, heavily pushing things like PWAs, the Bluetooth web API, and expanding JavaScript functionality so that sites only work properly on Chrome. Ultimately though, they don't even have to worry about the W3C because it's not like they're actually an enforcement body. If Google wants to go and just completely break the web, they have 65% of the market share. 
developers have to go and make their websites work on Google Chrome because that's where the people are. And then the browser developers, whether they want to or not, have to make their web browser compatible with what Google Chrome pushes through, even if it was never supposed to be a web standard in the first place. Basically, the only thing that is stopping Google Chrome from going on a complete rampage is the minuscule 3 to 4% market share that Firefox has and the 20 or so percent market share that Safari has. And I don't expect Safari to actually drop. Just because, as I mentioned earlier, Apple users are kind of weird and they like to use the specific Apple technology because, I don't know, something, something ecosystem, I don't understand it, but I expect Safari's market share to actually continue to rise up even when everything else is dropping. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing that a lot of people either don't realize about Mozilla or just don't really want to admit. And that is that Mozilla, while they do accept donations, isn't actually funded by donations, at least not technically. So the Mozilla Foundation, which is the foundation that basically does all of their political campaigning and all of that sort of stuff, is funded by donations. They are a charity. That's perfectly fine. That's where all your donations actually go. The Mozilla Corporation, though which actually develops things like Firefox and all of the other applications they actually make, is really funded by Google. What do I mean by that? Because that sounds like a pretty inflammatory statement. So the Mozilla Corporation is mainly funded by royalties. They get through things like ad deals and search deals and things like that. So the biggest deal that Mozilla has is with Google to actually have Google search as the default search engine inside of Firefox. And how much do you think that deal is worth right now? 400 to 450 million dollars a year, which, if my maths is correct, is somewhere in the realm of at least 75% of the income every year. It's not the only search engine deal they have, they have a different deal for countries like China, and in the past they were actually partnered with Yahoo, but as you may expect, Google has much deeper pockets than Yahoo does and can offer a much better deal. And even if Google doesn't go and act on it, if you don't think that a $400 million deal which funds most of your corporation doesn't give Google sway over what Mozilla actually does, you are absolutely kidding yourself. So when the Firefox market share falls to the point where that search engine deal just doesn't make any sense to Google and doesn't make any sense to other search engines, I think you can say goodbye to Mozilla. Now, the Mozilla Corporation obviously isn't spending every single dollar it has every year. It is actually saving some to go and work on other projects. And in recent years, Mozilla has actually been trying to build out things outside of just the Firefox web browser. You have things like their VPN, their password manager, and all of those other things they've been working on. But I think that it's going to be too little too late and those things aren't actually going to be able to fund the corporation when this deal disappears. I think that if they'd started earlier and actually started building up some way to be financially independent from their search deal, they actually would be able to survive, but I am very worried what's going to happen now. Now, prior to 2020, Mozilla had about 1,000 employees, but in January, they fired 70 of them, and then I believe halfway through the year, they fired another 250 losing about a third of their staff. Now, like every other company that did mass firings during 2020, it was obviously blamed on COVID, but I think that it was more likely that was the straw that broke the camel's back, and years of mismanaged funds is far more likely the problem. Because while things like a VPN are really cool, and if Mozilla made it, I don't know, five years ago, it could actually be a really big application. In 2021, though, these are really, really saturated markets. Every single market they're trying to get into has so much competition and has a couple of applications that just stand above the rest as the default that everyone goes with. Trying to start a new application in that market is going to be very difficult. Now, while the market share drop is happening, that's not the worst thing Mozilla is actually doing. While this is actually happening and their company is collapsing in on itself, the top executive is taking massive, massive pay rises. So between 2009 and 2014, I believe that Brendan Eich was the CEO. He did take pay rises, but nothing to the point where Chris Beard did. So Chris Beard took over in 2014. He took a tiny, tiny pay cut until the end of that year. And then the next year, pay rise. And then in 2016, boom all the way up to almost two and a half million. 
I don't know why. Now, I'm not against people making money. If you're the CEO of a company and you want to pay yourself an absolutely ridiculous salary, you are more than entitled to do so. The problem that I have is when a CEO pays themselves massive, massive pay rises when their company is failing. Now, I'm sure someone's going to make the argument that Mozilla isn't actually a web browser company. They're just a open web company that happens to make a web browser. Now, while that might sound good in theory, and Mozilla does actually do a lot of good work actually supporting other projects outside of Mozilla, if the Google search deal goes away, I don't think Mozilla has a way to recoup $400 million every single year. I would expect to see more massive firings to the point where Mozilla basically just operates as a skeleton staff trying to support their projects they still have going. And when that does happen, maintaining something like a web browser and all of the other projects they want to maintain is going to become pretty difficult. Now, I don't think that Firefox is ever really going to disappear. It's just that Mozilla's support of it probably will go away at some point. Firefox still has a pretty big support inside of the open source developer community, so it'll probably just exist as just another one of the open source web engines that people kind of work on as like a side project. Now, I don't know what could actually be done to stop this or at least slow it down, because while people in the open source and FOSS communities do actually understand these problems, the people you need to convince are the normies, because the normies are the vast majority of people, and they pretty much control what has the market share. And I don't know if you're going to convince just random people out there that they should go and use Firefox just to save the web, because they don't really understand the things that are actually going on behind the scene. Maybe you'd be able to convince a couple of people, but there's not enough distinguishing features between Firefox and Chrome that could actually make someone want to switch over from what they're already using when Chrome does everything a web browser needs to do. Yes, it is very privacy invading, and yes, there are serious problems with actually using the application, but from a normie's perspective, it, it's a web browser, and that's all that matters in the end. I know this is kind of a grim video, but the Google controlled web is the future we're gonna get, regardless of whether we want it or not. If you wanna make a blog talking about, I don't know, how much you think that Google sucks, you can go and do so over on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available, like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo, because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. I think that's going to be basically everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monza, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, Mitchell Peter, the Stephen Tony Shushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, Libra Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch my content on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>